Determine the inverse Laplace transform of some S domain function using the Stanley method. Here is an S domain transfer function. It has an S domain numerator and an S domain denominator. The Stanley method always produces one of the following for each pole of the S domain function. Could be an exponential function with a time constant of 1 over b. It could be two exponential functions with a time constant, each one with a time constant of 1 over b, and one has a ramp multiplier. It could be a sine function modulated by an exponential function. The time constant of the exponential is 1 over b. The radian frequency is omega, and the phase shift is g. And there are constants multiplying each term. Here are the only possibilities in this course. There are three F, uh, time domain functions based on non-repeating real poles, based on repeating real poles, based on complex conjugate poles. These are all real numbers. T is the independent variable, in other words, the horizontal axis of a graph. F is the dependent variable, in other words, the vertical axis of a graph. To summarize, the denominator has only three different factors that results in three different poles. Only three time domain functions can occur, one for each pole or pair of poles. What are the poles of the S domain function? The TI-89 seesaw function will find the poles of F. The poles of F are also the roots of the denominator. There are two complex conjugate poles. S is negative 13 plus 3i, and S is negative 13 minus 3i. The real part of both poles is negative 13. The imaginary parts of both poles are plus and minus 3i. Complex conjugate poles indicate the third case. Since we have complex conjugate poles, the inverse Laplace transform has this form, where b is 13 and omega is 3. A and G are the only unknowns now. And we can determine both of them using one calculation. A and G together form a complex number in polar form. A is the magnitude, and G is the angle in radians. Let's review a complex number in polar form. If angle G were in degrees, then the complex number would look like A angle G. Since angle G is in radians, then the complex number looks like E to the negative G times I multiplied by A. Remember that E to the negative G multiplied by I times A is the mathematically rigorous version of a complex number in polar form. Here is the complex number we desire. It's calculated using this procedure. The original function is multiplied by two things, 1 over omega, and the factor from which the poles came. Since this factor is also one of the factors of the denominator, this factor will cancel the same factor in the denominator. There's one more step after cancellation of factors. That which remains is evaluated at one of the poles. S is evaluated at the pole containing the positive imaginary part. 
The final result is the complex number containing A and G. We have thus found the inverse Laplace transform of f of s using the Stanley method. There is another way. It's called partial fraction expansion, but the Stanley method is easier. The Stanley method also yields the most efficient form of the resulting time domain function. Also, computer tools that find the inverse Laplace transform usually do not result in the same efficient time domain form.